there have been a lot of studies in recent years about the AI generation. Um, some of them track uh, how they make decisions. Some of them track uh, what are their felt needs. Um, some of the things that we're learning, uh, for example, is that the AI generation has a very, very reduced attention span. Uh, my generation, we could uh, pay attention to something for 25 minutes. Um, I'm generation X. I'm 42 years old. So in school, we could sit and listen to 25 minutes. For 25 minutes in, to a sermon, we can sit and listen for 25 minutes. Um, new studies have shown that the I generation they can focus on something for six minutes. That's a very very big difference, and it means that we have to radically change how we communicate with that culture. Um, some other ways that the young people are changing is that they're becoming moral individualists. Uh, my generation, we were moral relativists. Uh, it meant that I could have my truth and you could have your truth, and that was okay. Both of them were okay. Moral individualists means that the same person holds two truths to be true, even though they're conflicting. Um, so it means that um, for a young person in a Bible study, they could say it's wrong to sleep with my girlfriend, and and they would believe it a hundred percent. And then an hour later, they'd be sleeping with their girlfriend and not think it's wrong. So that's a, a moral individualist. Um, some other things that are, are changing is that there's this uh, phenomenon called FOMO, the fear of missing out. This is how young people make decisions today. Uh, not what would be best for them, but will I miss out on something if I don't go? And, and actually that can be very useful for the church in the way we market or advertise things. Um, some other things, young people, uh, they advocate for change on, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, they are very supportive um, of social campaigns. They will click a like. But changing, turning that change into action is a very, very difficult process. Um, so you might get a, a million likes on a campaign that you have, but if that campaign needs to have some kind of follow-up action, you'd be very surprised at how little action those young people sometimes are willing to, to create. Um, obviously, some of the changes are that young people are entering puberty much, much younger, and they're staying much, much longer. And that has a an implication to our youth ministries. What age group um, do we, uh, at what age does a young person join our, our youth group? Is it 15, is it 13, and, and when do they leave? These are all changes that we have to bear in mind. Um, and obviously with advertising, nowadays it must be personal. It must be personal and visual, non-static. So for example, if you have a look at your Facebook page, there's advertisements on your Facebook page. I don't know if you know that or not. And those advertisements are focused just on you, and they'll be based on whatever your last Google search was. So young people today are used to being addressed by the media in an extremely personal way. They're being told that you are important and we'll focus on your need. 